so I had a bit of an accident. The short version is, on my last shoot, I was rushing around, which is never a good idea with a large camera. And as I moved from one setup to another setup with my ground glass located on the camera, I accidentally knocked the camera and the ground glass went flying off, landing on the ground and smashing into a million pieces. Now the Chroma 617 has magnets that registers the film back in place. And for some reason I thought that the uh, ground glass also had magnets that held it in place. I was wrong. There's a little plastic lip that registers it so that it's correctly lined up, but that's pretty much it that's holding it in place. And unfortunately for me, that little lip was just not enough. Now this is no fault of the 617, this is a fault of me. I was moving too quickly. But it got me thinking as I was waiting for the replacement ground glass that I ordered to come in the mail. I'd seen a Nick Carver video where he's got a Shenhao, and the Shenhao actually has the ground glass attached to the camera on a hinge, and so it just hinges out of the way when you want to put the film back in place. And so I thought, is there a way I can do that with the Chroma 617? Now, some of the rules that I sort of set myself are, I don't want to damage or alter the 617 in any way, shape or form. There's a little plastic lip that registers the uh, ground glass in place, and so that stops us being able to literally just fold the hinge out of the way. But I thought, maybe I could 3D print some brackets that would allow it to move up and then out of the way. Now I must say, I know very little about Fusion 360 or 3D modeling at all. So everything you see from now on, treat it with a grain of salt. There are thousands and thousands of people who are significantly better at doing this than I am. But it was an interesting little project that I thought I'd give it a go. Okay, so the aim is that I've got my little cardboard aided design bit I've got here. So this is the first part, theoretically, um, that will attach there. Then, if all thing goes to plan, I have this little hinge here, and that's the theory. So that's kind of the, the plan. I'm trying to do this by hand. So that, this base part, will connect here. Then this part will connect to, this is just a uh, mock-up, like 3D printed of the focusing screen. That way I can mess around with it without risking breaking my original, my actual one. So the theory is, it'll attach with <clears throat> double-sided tape and have a little uh, bracket, uh, sort of a cutout here that can slide up and down. So the theory being it would slide up and then out, out of the way. Once I had my little cardboard pieces ready to go, I was able to take a photo of them and bring them into Fusion 360, which would then allow me to trace out an outline around the cardboard and then extrude it into a 3D shape, which I could then 3D print. All right, so after some 3D printing, I've got this part here. Um, as you can see, I kind of misjudged the placement of the hole there. So I'm gonna have to work on that. Um, and then this section here, theoretically, will go like so. That rotates over. And then this is this, the part that will mount on the camera. That way it's removable. Um, and theoretically, it'll go like this. So it slides up, out of the way. At least that's the theory. Alright, I reprinted this part and now I've got a mount there for a uh, rib nut or a threaded M3 rib nut. Um, so the theory is that's going to mount in there like so. That works pretty well. Um, and I have printed off um, some of the other parts. The one thing I did discover though is um, when it folds back, uh, the particular tripod head I have, um, the one of the uh, it's a geared tripod head. Um, there is the propensity for the screen to actually uh, touch the geared tripod head. So what I want to do is I'm going to add some kind of stopper somewhere along here, which I've marked. So I just want a little stopper so that when this is the V1 part, but it's pretty much the same. So when that rotates down, I want it to stop there. So I think that's far enough where the screen's out of out of play, but it doesn't go all the way down and then hit things. So I've got to reprint this one again. 
So back into Fusion 360 I went to add my little plastic lip to stop my ground glass from falling too, too far down and then printed off another version of the bracket. All right, so I've actually mounted this on the actual screen now, so I'm pretty happy. Um, actually, this side's probably easier to show. I uh, printed off that little stoppy here so that when it folds back, it stops there. So that's as far as it can go. You see I've got the little sliders happening there. So basically, yeah, the screen goes up and then out of the way. That's the rough plan. All right, so... Looks like that hinge is actually doing, the hinge stopper is doing its trick. It is just touching there, which is fine. Kind of hard to do this when it's not glued on, but then that goes up and around and on. The screen is now attached to the Arca Swiss plate, which means I didn't have to make any changes to the Chroma 617 itself. The little registering lip is still there, and I can lift the focusing screen out of the way and then fold it out when putting my film back on. And the little registering pins on the side make sure that the screen doesn't go too far hitting the, the gears on my tripod head. I did realise one slight flaw in my plan, which was now that the screen is permanently attached to the camera, I can't put the screen away in its normal little velvet bag for storage when I'm, my camera is in, in my camera bag. So I decided to create a, a little plastic screen that I can clip on to the uh, ground glass screen when the camera is not in use to protect it when it's in the camera bag from random things scratching it. My first go didn't work so well, so then I decided to do what everybody should always do. I went to magnets. Magnets solve everybody's problems. So there you have it. All I need to do now is take it out on a shoot. So until the next time, say hi to your dog for me.